Okay, hello everyone. <clears throat> so today we're going to be talking about hypothesis testing um, and beginning chapter 9. And these are going to be the only slides for chapter 9. So first thing we want to look at is uh, Taco Bell has a prototype or had a prototype store. This was in 2002 called um, Defy. Uh, this is in uh, Minnesota somewhere. Taco Bell's two-story neon purple lit Defy arrived with a bold objective to get customers through the drive through in two minutes or less. And the question is, is how do you know if this is achieved? You know, you take samples of um, wait times and service times, but how do you, how can you be confident that that, that wasn't just a fluke uh, and that the actual service time is um, less than two minutes? So for instance, if they went ahead and claimed that, that they had achieved that, then um, there there could be some, if that was, could that be proven not to be the case, you know, then they might be legally liable for some sort of false advertising um, litigation. Anyway, so, so, so how do we know that? Well, that's sort of an example of a hypothesis test. So, uh, what is hypothesis testing? It's a sophisticated approach to verifying or rejecting claims about a property of a population. So remember, the properties of populations that we're going to be talking about are going to be, well, that I cover in the next point. So it's the properties of a population. Um... And that property constitutes a, the, the claim about that property is a hypothesis. And we're able to verify the validity of a claim on a statistical basis. In this chapter, we present key components of a formal hypothesis test. There are eight steps, in fact, that we will be looking at. The concepts in this section are general and apply to hypothesis tests involving lots of different things, but in particular, proportions and means. So these are ways of testing claims about the proportion of a population or the means of a population. Example. Uh, average service time of a Taco Bell Defy is less than two minutes. That's a claim. It's a claim on the population. All service times. The average of all service times is less than two minutes. Um, on the proportion side of things, you have more than a claim like this. More than 85% of Americans own a smartphone. That is a claim about all Americans. We're saying that 85% of them have a smartphone. These are claims about population parameters. Okay, and so how do we verify that when all we have is a single sample? So here is an eight-step method for, uh, for hypothesis testing. And I'm going to refer back to this again and again, so I'm going to go ahead and bookmark this. Okay, let's see. Once I do that, there we go. All right, step one, identify claim. Step two, negate claim and form the alternative claim. Um, step three, identify null and alternative hypotheses. Step four, select significance level. Step five, identify and compute test statistic. Step six, find the p-value. Step seven, make your determination. And step eight, restate decision in non-technical terms. So the decision you made in step seven. All right, we're going to be going through each of those with a bit more elaboration. So first, identify the claim. What is the claim that you're trying to validate? And then put it in symbolic form. Example with, well, no, we're going to do examples in a minute. So just keep this in your pocket. Next, negate. Negate that claim. 
What is the opposite of the original claim? Oh, that's a typo. And then put that in symbolic form. Step three, identify null and alternative hypotheses. You have two statements, right? One and its negation. One of those is going to have an equality. And the other one is not going to have an equality. Whichever statement has equality, put that as your H0 statement, your null hypothesis. That's what the H stands for. And zero, um, in England, they'll say null for zero sometimes. Null or not uh, for zero. I, I've heard them say not. I, I, I don't actually know if I've heard them say null for zero. Anyway, but uh, I guess statisticians do. H0, H1, sorry, is the alternative hypothesis. Now this, in the homework, you will see this denoted HA, and sometimes it is denoted H capital A. All of those are appropriate. Uh, the null hypothesis is, is almost always labeled H0. Okay, so the null hypothesis gets the statement that has equality in it, and the alternative hypothesis, H1, has the statement without equality. And I will demonstrate that. Okay, step four, select significance level. Um, this is similar to your confidence level for margin of error. Uh, we call it alpha, and if it is not specified, we generally just pick 0 0.05. Step five, identify the test statistic. Now this is another slide I would very much like to bookmark because look at all this information it has on it. If your parameter that you're making a statement about is a proportion, you're going to use this formula for your test statistic. You've got your sample proportion right there, and you've got your population proportion that is given, P is given, by null hypothesis given by your null hypothesis that's what you will plug in for p okay all right great so there it is um the the distribution and this will make more sense later on is normally distributed and so that's what we're going to use to find the p-value later on. So this table here has a lot more information than you know what to do with at this point. But believe me when I say you will find it helpful later on. Okay. Um, yeah, so if I'm, having, if I'm testing a claim about a population mean, about a population mean, I'm going to use this t-statistic here. But that's only when I don't know the standard deviation. That's just like with confidence intervals. When I know the population standard deviation, it becomes normally distributed, and I use this right here. Um, okay. Um, and then we're not going to talk about this, but if there were, suppose, say, later on in whatever field you decide to study in, if you were required to approximate a standard deviation or prove a claim about standard deviation, you would use what is called the chi-squared distribution, which we will talk about later on because it's important in goodness of fit tests, which are really neat. Um, and then you would use this statistic right here for chi-squared. Okay, but don't worry about having to do that this chapter. Step six, find the p-value. The p-value is the probability of a sample being as extreme or more extreme than data given um, than the data given a null hypothesis. 
Okay, this sounds familiar, doesn't it? This is related to significance. Is our data significant or not? Okay, so there's three different situations. Either your null hypothesis, see, so your null hypothesis has the equality. The alternative hypothesis is going to have the, well, the other possibility. There are three of them. It could be not equal, uh, less than, or greater than. If it's not equal, it's called a two-tailed test. The p-value then represents twice the area to the table b to the t twice the area of sorry that should be of twice the area of the tail beyond the test statistic. Um, if it is a left-tailed test, then the p-value is the area to the left of the t statistic. If it is a right-tailed test then the p-value is the area to the right of the statistic. That is a right-tailed test, and that happens when the alternative hypothesis is uh, greater than or equal to. And what's going on here is we have this distribution, either normal or standard distribution, and then we have our test statistic, which is either t or Z, depending on the distribution. If it is a right-tailed test, we want this area here. That's what the p-value will be. That is if it is a right-tailed test. All right. Okay. So, again, just keep that in mind. It'll make more sense when we do an example. Okay, step seven, make a determination. Is the p-value, is the probability of my data being extreme given the null hypothesis, is that less than alpha? If yes, then your normal everyday data, the data that you just collected carefully, if that data, then that data is extreme. If the p-value is less than alpha, then that data is regarded as extreme under the assumption of the null hypothesis. But your data really has no reason to be extreme because it was collected carefully. That's the assumption. And so we reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is bigger than alpha, then your normal everyday data is not so extreme, even when we assume our null hypothesis, which we're trying to um, either reject or otherwise. So the null hypothesis may, may be reasonable, and we will not reject it. Therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, but that's step seven, is to make that determination. Step eight is to restate, the, and this is the final step, restate the, de the decision in non-technical terms. Restate according to the original claim, which will abbreviate OC. Here are examples. So if you reject the null, and the original claim is in the, hypoth is in the alternative hypothesis, then you say, there is sufficient evidence. So if you reject the null, there is sufficient evidence to support, and then you state the alternative, the original claim. If you rejected the null and the original claim was H0, uh, was the null hypothesis, then it's the original claim you want to state your conclusion with respect to. So you say there is sufficient, uh, there is sufficient evidence to reject. I left out the word evidence there. If you fail to reject the null and the original claim was the alternative hypothesis, then you really don't have enough information to support the null, the, uh, the alternative hypothesis, which is the original claim. Um, if the original claim was your null hypothesis and you failed to reject it, then you'd say, well, there's not enough evidence to reject that statement that original claim.
Okay, we're going to go back over this in the context of an example. And the hope is that things will begin to fit together. And you'll and with a few more examples, you'll get the hang of uh, you'll get the hang of it. Okay, so here's the first example: drone delivery. In a poll of hundred of one thousand and nine customers, fifty four percent, which is uh, it was actually five hundred and forty five respond uh, co- consumers responded that they are were not comfortable with a drone delivering their purchase. They just don't think that would be a good idea. All right, now, the claim that we would like to investigate, and usually the claim is just given to you, but in this case, we'll kind of think of it ourselves. The claim that I think we ought to investigate is that um, the majority, and go ahead and write this down, or um, please write this down, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look over this. The majority of consumers are not comfortable with drone deliveries. With drones delivering their purchases. Okay, so that's the claim, and what we want to do is uh, test that claim. All right, now, what I'm going to do is open up Excel. Now, we're going to be in Excel a lot this unit, and so it'd be good to get used to that. Um... Right, okay. So, um, let me just demonstrate how I would like you to to display this in Excel. Uh, you're going to have this unit, we're going to have things called work samples. And those are going to be Excel sheets, where you do basically what we are doing here. And um, I'll be grading those. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to name the example. So, the example... All right, is um, drone delivery. So come up with a title for the problem. All right, and now let's just get right into the steps. So step one. Um, that is the original claim. So the original claim is, uh, let's see, what was it? The majority... of consumers are not comfortable with drones delivering their purchases. Um, Make sure, okay, so there is going to be a spot for you to submit this Excel sheet that we are making right now during this video so make sure you open up make sure you open up an excel sheet and follow along okay so there's our uh, step one that's our original claim all right what's step two now so step two oh let's see now we want to write this original claim in a symbolic notation and so what i'm going to put here okay so we're talking about a majority of customers well a majority is more than 50 percent that's a proportion and so this original claim is that if we let p be the proportion of customers so let's just write that down so so um P is the proportion of consumers mm, 
not comfortable with drones, with drone deliveries. Deliveries. Then, our original claim written in symbolic notation is P, P um, is greater than 0 0.5. Okay, so that right there is our original is our claim. So I'm using p rather than p hat because this is a population thing. I want to I want to make a claim about the whole population. All right, step two. What is the negation of that? What's the opposite of that? Well, that's going to be p less than or equal to zero point five. It's just the opposite of something being greater than that. It's going to be less than or equal to. All right, and that's already in symbolic notation. Step three now is to determine, let me just take a look at these, um, let me put these slides side by side if I can. Okay. Huh? Oh, whoops. Mm. Split view. Great. Okay. Uh, let's go. Let's go right here. So where am I? All right. So first one was identify the claim. Second was was negate was negate the claim, and then put in symbolic notation. We did that. Step three is to identify the null and alternative hypothesis. Okay. So here we go. So h h zero. It, my null hypothesis, now that's going to be the one that has e equality. And so I'm going to put P equals 0 0.5. And that was my negation here. Because that was the one that had equal sign. The alternative, then, is going to be the other one. So that's going to be H1 P greater than 0 0.5. Oops, not O. C. 0 0.5. Okay. So there's my null hypothesis which I take from my original claim or the negation, whichever one has equality. I put that in my null hypothesis. The, the other one goes into the um, alternative hypothesis. Notice that my original claim, if my original claim started with p equals 0 0.5, that was my original claim, that would end up in the null hypothesis, and the alternative hypothesis would be not equals. So the original claim could be in either the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis. All right. Step four is to select significance level. Now, in this example, no significance level was given. So I'm going to use 0 0.5 tab uh, 0 0.05 so alpha is going to equal uh, equal 0 0.05 that's going to be my significance level step 5 now is going to be to identify and te uh, and uh, compute the test statistic. So I am dealing with a proportion. It's the proportion P that I'm trying to write a claim about, decide a claim about. And so I need to decide um, whether the requirements are met, first of all. So N in this case, let me just go ahead and put some things in. N equals equals 109, 1009. That is from the original statement here. 
hundred one thousand and nine customers. All right. Um, P hat is um, P hat is going to be um, um, five forty five. 545 divided by um, 109, or 1,009. Okay, so there's that. Okay, now the requirements say that p hat times p has got to be greater than 5, and p hat times q has got to be greater than 5. And so in the absence of an actual p hat and q, we're just going to use our... Um, our estimates here and see if it comes close and it doesn't come close at all the uh, from our our sample um, the actual number of uh, people that said um, they were uncomfortable was 554 so that's well bigger than five and the remainder of that which would be something like five um, the remainder of that which would be something like 464, is still well bigger than 5. All right, so the requirements are met. And so my test statistic is going to be this thing right here. Z, so it's going to be a normal distribution. Z equals P hat minus P over the square root of p um, now again we don't have that um, p um, q over n okay now uh, so p uh, actually I misspoke a little bit earlier we know p or we are assuming that p is um, 0 0.5. That is what the P is. So P times N is um, 500 and, uh, 504 and a half. And that's bigger than 5. Let me just write that out. N P equals 1,000 divided by O times... Zero point five. There's my n, and p comes from the null, and that is bigger than five. Q also equals point zero five, or zero point five, and uh, so n q is also bigger than five. So we're fine using this. All right. So let's carry on. Q hat is going to equal 1 minus p hat. Enter. 1 minus p hat. OK, what else do I need? I have p. Well, let me just p equals um, what the alternative hypothesis says. So equals 0 0.5 q equals 1 equals 1 minus P. Okay, with all that information, I can do my test statistic. So I'm going to do Z equals, and this is my test statistic, equals parenthesis P hat, minus p divided by square root p times q wait a minute <laughs> silly me p times q divided by n 
close the square root. And that's it. Let's take a look at that. Let's maybe actually, let's write some stuff above it. Um, oh, I can't do it while it's open like that. Okay, I'll enter. All right, there's my test statistic right there. Um, okay, and that's step five. Let's go on to step six now. Find the p-value. All right. So step six. I've got my test statistic that I found based on the context. Now I need to find the p-value. I need to look at what sort of a hypothesis test I'm doing. Is it two-tailed, left-tailed, or right-tailed? Well, you tell me. What sign is being used in my null hypothesis? Is it not equals to? And remember, the null hypothesis is this right here, my null hypothesis. Let me just, right there, that's my null hypothesis. Is it not equal to, less than, or greater than? Well, it's greater than. So this is a right-tailed test. And so the p-value is going to be the area to the right of the test statistic and the test statistic is normally distributed. We can see that right here, normally distributed. All right, so pval equals, equals, okay, now it's area to the right is what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go one, minus norm dot dist and then what do I put in now? Well I put in my test statistic. My test statistic, comma, it's a z-score. So what's the standard what's the mean and standard deviation of a z-score? The mean is zero, standard deviation is one. And because it's area I'm looking for Cumulative is going to be 1. Close parentheses, enter. There's my p-value. Let's take a look at that again. 1 minus the norm. It's because the norm is going to give me, the norm.dist is going to give me values, uh, area to the left of my test statistic, which is 2.55 standard deviations above the mean. So, Without the one minus, that norm.dist value is really big. And that's the area on the left. But I don't want the area on the left. I want the area on the right. So I'm going to subtract from one the area on the left to get the area on the right. And I get 0 0.0053. OK. I found my p-value. Now it's time to go to step 7. and make my determination. Is the p-value less than alpha? Is p-val less than alpha? And the answer here is yes. Yes, it is. OK. So what does that mean? That means I am going to so I reject the null. Uh, hypothesis. I reject the null hypothesis. See, the p-value is the probability that of finding data as extreme or more extreme than my sample. That probability is super, super small, which is lower than alpha. That probability is very small. And so what that means is, is that my normal little old sample is really, really extreme. But why is it extreme? It's extreme assuming that the true population 
is a uh, proportion is 0 0.5. And so I'm going to say that that assumption doesn't work. That's a bad assumption because my data should not be um, unusual. It should not be significant. It's just normal data. It's, 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 it's from, the actual sam from the actual proportion. All right, and so that's how that works. So I reject the null hypothesis. And so why don't I, why don't I go ahead and write that? Reject the null. There it is. Okay. Step eight now is to rephrase your d conclusion with regard to the null hypothesis. Uh, with, sorry, with regard to the, um, to the um, original claim. The original claim was that the majority... Um, was that the, uh, so was that the majority of people were comfortable or were not comfortable with drone deliveries. Okay. And so the null hypothesis that it was, um, that the proportion of people who are comfortable is 50%, um, we rejected that. And so what we're saying here is that there is evidence, evidence being my sample, there is evidence to um, support the claim that uh, the majority of consumers are not comfortable with drone deliveries. All right. Um, great. Okay, so there's my... There's my... There's my solution. All eight steps. I walked through and I came to a, a, a conclusion here. All right, so now what I would like to do, I'd like us to do is take a screenshot and put it, uh, let's see, can I paste it in Notability right here. There it is. Whoops, let's see now. I want to make this thing bigger. All right, so I'm going to be looking for your screenshot. Kind of gives me a lot to do, but I don't mind. And then, speaking of more for me to do, I want you to grade, I want you to answer these questions. Just go ahead and write them on the slide. Okay. And if you have any questions for me, write that on this, on this slide as well. If there was anything that didn't make sense, that you felt like it ought to, or there was something I could do, to improve my presentation, go ahead and write it on this slide. I will be looking at this slide. All right. Okay. So let's look at this example. So again, Taco Bell's two-story neon purple lit lit Defy restaurant uh, is going to be, as he arrived with a bold objective to get customers through the drive through in two minutes or less. Okay, how do you know if this is achieved? Given a sample of 25 service times. Okay, and the data here is in seconds. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab the data. I'm going to go to Nota I'm going to go to Canvas. I'm going to go to um, the home page, front page. And uh, I see the Taco Bell Defy uh, XL. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'm going to share it to Excel. Uh, let's see. Do I want to delete this draft? Um, yeah, go ahead and delete it. All right. Okay. So here is the... Um, here's our service times. So now, okay, great. So I've got that in hand. Now what I want to do is um, 
Now what I want to do is go... All right, let's see. Now what I want to do is go to Notability. All right. So um, I need to do a hypothesis test. And the, uh, the null hypothesis here is going to be, so let me go ahead and, and uh, put this in. So first thing I'll do is I'm going to insert a column. Click there, copy, no, click there. All right, let's see, save a copy. Save, great. Now, now I can insert um, example, Taco Bell, Defy, all right. Okay, I'm just gonna let my data hang out there on the side and I'm gonna put my steps here. So step one, first is identify original claim. And so the original claim is going to be the mean service times are less than two minutes. Okay, now I need to write that symbolically. So I'm gonna go mu, mu is the population mean, and it's the population mean I'm talking about. Mu is less than two minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and put everything in seconds because all my data is in seconds. So I'm gonna do 120 seconds. So mu is less than 120. Step two. Um, what's, what's the opposite of that? Well, the opposite of that is just going to be mu greater than or equal to 120. And there it is, written in symbolic notation and everything. Step three now is to determine my null and uh, alternative hypothesis. So I'm going to go h0 colon, let's see, what is that going to be? That's going to be which one has equality? Uh, well, the the alternative, the uh, the negation has an equal, has equality. Uh, this one right here has equality. So I'm going to write mu equals. Remember, the null hypothesis always has to be equality. Um, mu equals 120. The alternative hypothesis. I'll do uh, HA this time. Is going to be my the other one. My, which is which happens to be my original claim. And it's going to be that mu is less than 120. Okay, great. So I've got my null and my alternative hypothesis. Step four is now to, let me just go back here, significance level. Again, the significance level is not specified. So I'm going to use alpha equals what 0 0.05 okay now for step five identify test statistic okay what situation am i dealing with here it's not a proportion it's a mean it's a mean right the mean service time is the population standard deviation known? No, no, it's not. They didn't give me any population standard deviation. That was not suggested at all. There's no population standard deviation, so I cannot use that second column, the second row. I have to use, oh, no, forgive me. I can't use the third one where sigma is known. I'm going to use the second one where sigma is not known. And here I have my uh, standard deviation. Uh, my standard deviation is not known. And so this is a T distribution. Now for the T distribution, uh, 
And so for the T distribution, I need to use the, um, I need to use this test statistic, which is this, this one right here. Okay, and so there's a number of things in there that I need. Um, so we have P. All right. So what need? What things do we need here? We need P hat and uh, P. No, not P hat. We need um, X bar. X bar equals the uh the average here so i'm going to go ahead and select these nope wait a minute equals average there and put that enter okay so there's my x bar let's see what else do i need mu i need but i know what that is mu has got to be uh, 120, 120. Uh, I need S. So S is going to be equals stdev dot S because it is a sample. I'll go down like that. Enter. So there's S. And the last thing I need is just N. N equals um, 25, right? Equals, there's data there is 25. Okay, and so now it's time for me to do my test statistic. Which is T. T equals... Um, See what do we have here? X bar, whoops, okay, equals X bar minus um, the mean, close parenthesis, divided by S, divided by square root N, is there, close that. And close both of those, press enter. And there's my test statistic. And that concludes step five. Now for step six, we, let's see. Okay, so there's that. Now, uh, so, so step six. Let's just take a look at that, right? Take a look at that test statistic. Okay. Now let's uh, compute our test statistic. And so I need, no, sorry. Now let's find the p-value. Okay, so... Uh, because the null hypothesis has less than in it, it's going to be a left tail test, less than left tail. And so the p-value is going to be the area on the left. Well, that's exactly what Excel gives me anyway. So that's good. See p-value there on the left. So I'm going to do equals. Now it's a t-distribution. Notice right here. It's a T distribution. So I'm going to do equals T dot dist. And I put in my test statistic. Right there. Comma. Now I need degrees of freedom. Just like before, just like with the confidence interval, the degrees of freedom is going to be N minus 1. So I'm going to go N minus 1. And I'll press enter. Oh, what's it say? Too few arguments. All right, let's take a look. 
You know what? Let me. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to. Let me just do. Okay, close that. Um, DF, degrees of freedom. That's something I need before I do my test, to my p value. Degrees of freedom is going to equal n minus 1. Enter. Okay, and so now we can find the test, the p value. So that's going to be p value equals. Um, equals t dot dist. Now look at this. It's got two tailed, right tailed, uh, or just t dot dist. So I'm going to go ahead and put t dot dist. It says x. I'll put equals that. All right. And then it wants degrees of freedom. So I'll put that right there. And then cumulative, I'll put 1, cumulative of course, because I want the area. And I'll press enter, and there's my, there is my p-value. So step 7 is going to be, now I make my determination. Is the p-value smaller than alpha? And the answer to that is no. Let's just see, is, well, so I have no, and, um, and so we fail to reject, fail to reject the null hypothesis. Um, great, okay, so let's do, so step eight now is going to be to rewrite our conclusion. And so, for our conclusion, we're going to say that um, there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that the average service time whoops Sir, service time that the they claim that the average service time is less than two minutes okay so they're certainly not certainly can't claim that it is not at this point not with the data we have now okay so there's that example all right let's see what we can do here let's uh open that up there it is let's go ahead and grab a screenshot of this Okay, anyway, so there it is. All right, and here's a few more questions for you to uh, answer. And I'll be looking at those. Okay, now what I want to do is talk about type 1 and type 2 errors. Uh, so a type 1 error is where you um, make the mistake of, of uh, rejecting the null hypothesis when it is in fact true. Uh, the symbol alpha is used to represent the probability of a type 1 error. So that's that's how that's how our significance level and our um, outcome of the hypothesis test are related. Alpha is um, 
going to be the, the probability of rejecting H0 when given H0 is true. And so remember, whether we reject H0 or not is based off of the sample that we have. And that data, that sample, um, is regarded as a random variable. Okay, type 2 error. Uh, the mistake of failing to reject the... So the net type 2 error is the mistake of failing to reject the null hypothesis when it is actually false. Um, so, um, yeah. The symbol beta is used to... Um, represent that probability. Here's a little table and a mnemonic. The, um, so if we, so the true state of, na of, of nature here is that's, that's the columns. So the first column is that the null hypothesis is true. The second column is that the null hypothesis is false. If we reject the null when the null hypothesis is true, then that is a type 1 error. If we fail to, if we reject it when it's false, that's the correct decision. If we fail to reject it when it's true, then that's the correct decision. But if we fail to reject it when it is in fact false, then that's a type 2 error. Okay, now a mnemonic to use to remember this is routine for fun. So you've got routine, and you just take the consonants, R-T-N, F-R, F-N. And so the RTN stands for reject true null. Reject true null. That's type 1. That's the first one. And then FRFN, reject, fail to reject false null. That's the second. That's type 2. Okay, so let's take this example. Um, consider the claim that a medical procedure designed to increase the likelihood of a baby girl is effective so that the Pro probability of a baby girl is p greater than 0 0.5. Give the following null and alternative hypotheses. Write statements describing a, a type 1 error, and b, a type 2 error. Okay, given, here's our hypotheses. The original claim, uh, original claim that will be addressed is the final conclusion. Right. Okay. So, um, um, type 1 error, which is going to be, so the type 1 error is going to, well, it's going to be, what do we do? We reject true null in a type 1 error. So the null is true, and we reject it. So what we do is we, um, we support p equals 0 0.5 uh, when p actually does equal 0 0.5. Type 2, a type 2 error would be we, um, we failed to support p greater than zero when it was actually true. Uh, that is to say, p, p was greater than or equal to 0 0.5. And we failed to, to support that when we should have. Okay, because the, the sample didn't support it. All right, great. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over four examples of hypothesis testing, and you're more than welcome to, to, um, to continue watching, uh, but you don't have to. So um, for those of you who are ending it here, I'll see you in class. And uh, for those of you who carry on, let's, let's get started. Okay, so you've got the drug oxycontin, uh, which is oxycodone, is used to treat pain, but it's dangerous because it is addictive and can be lethal. In clinical trials, 227 subjects were treated with oxycontin, and 52 of them developed nausea based on data from Purdue Pharma LP. Use a 
0.05 significance level to test the claim that more than 20% of OxyContin users develop nausea. Does the rate of nausea appear to be too high? All right, great. Well, for that, let's go to, um, let's go to our Excel sheet here. So I'm going to go. This is example one. Oxy Contin, and uh, and let's uh, go ahead. So step one. What's the null case? Okay, so let's put this right here. Okay, so what's the original claim? Use the, da, 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 use the 0 0.05 significance level to test the claim that more than 20% of OxyContin users develop nausea. All right, so the original claim is more than 20% of users develop nausea. Nausea. All right, now what is that in terms of uh, notation? Well, the mean, so more than 20%. So we're talking about a population. So let's let P be the... Um, be proportion of users that were na nauseated. All right, and the idea is that the claim is that more than more than 20% did that. So that would mean that P is greater than 0 0.20. All right, so there's my original claim. Okay, step two, the negation. What's the negation? That's going to be P is less than or equal to 0 0.2. All right, step three. Oh, uh, yeah, and that's already in notation. Step three is the uh, hypotheses. So H0 is going to be uh, the one that has equality. The, the null hypothesis always has equality. So P equals 0 0.2. And the alternative hypothesis is going to be P is greater than, is greater than, uh, 0 0.2 all right so this one had equality this one did not have equality so that's how i found those my original claim and let me just indicate that my original claim is here in the um in the um in the uh alternative hypothesis Whoops, I did step three twice. I did step two twice. Okay, there. All right, now, step four. And uh, what is step four? Um, how do I... Step four is select confidence level, and then step five is test statistics. So let's... So the confidence level here is going to be alpha equals equals 0 0.05 that's given to me in the problem step 5 is um, the test statistic and so what test statistic am I going to use this is a proportion so when it's a proportion the test statistic is going to be Z it's going to be Z distributed and it's going to be a p hat minus p over square root p q over n. That's going to be my test statistic. I could look that up on the formula on the sheet just to make sure. Yeah, there it is. 
Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting everything I need. So what do I need here? I need p hat. All right. p hat equals tab uh, equals the data is, okay, equals 52 divided by 22, 227. Enter. Uh, q hat. No, I don't need q hat. I need n. Um, actually, the next thing I need, I'll just do p. p is, because of the null hypothesis, p is equal to 0 0.2. Enter. Okay, now I need q. q equals 1 minus p. Let's see. I don't think I... No, 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 no. Equals 1 minus p. There it is. Now I need n. n equals 2, 2, 7. All right. Now my z statistic, or my test statistic, z equals this thing equals parenthesis p hat minus p close parenthesis divided by square root p times q divided by n see take a look at that compare it with uh, what i wrote on the side there enter 1.095. All right, but that's my test statistic. Step six now is to compute the p-value. This is p-value is going to equal. Now it's normally distributed, and I want to. And um. Um. So there's my bell curve, here's 0, uh, here's 1.9, 1 1.09, and, um, and I need to find the, now, this is, um, the alternative is greater than, it's not less than, it's greater, r, greater than, so I'm looking for this area here. Now I can tell because that is only about one standard deviation away. That area is not going to be very small. That's what I would expect. So let's go ahead and do this now. Equals. Now it's the area to the right that I'm looking for. So I'm going to do 1 minus norm dot dist. Whoops, norm dot dist. Um, I need x. x is going to be my z value, my z score. Mean is going to be 0. Standard deviation is going to be 1. And cumulative is going to be 1. Enter. And I get 1.13. OK. And this thing, I'll just go ahead and make a note. This thing is bigger than alpha. So step seven, then, I'm going to make my determination. And my determination will be to fail to reject the null. And I'm doing that because p is not less than alpha. If p were less than alpha, then my data would be sufficiently, um, would be extreme given the null hypothesis. But it's not really extreme, and so perhaps my null hypothesis is not so is not so far fetched. So I'm not going to reject it. All right. Um, step eight now is to write the original claim. There is not sufficient evidence. Evid. 
evidence to to suggest that 20% of users become nauseated. Okay. Um, I should I should change this to say more than. There is not evidence to suggest that more than that more than twenty percent of users become nauseated. Okay. There's just not enough evidence to suggest that. The, the data that we had, yes, it was over 20%, but it was close enough to not, to not, um, for it, it was close enough for it not to be absurd to say that the, um, that the actual, um, proportion is equal to 20%. Okay, great. Let's go on to the next example. Uh, so let me, maybe I'll... Uh, yeah, so let's just go on to the next example. Example two. Um, let's see. Let's see, how do I get to the... There it is. Oh. There. All right. Sheet two. And this will have example two. And this example is the garlic. Garlic and cholesterol. Okay, let's read this. In a test, in a test of the effectiveness of garlic in lowering cholesterol, 49 subjects were treated with raw garlic. Cholesterol levels were measured before and after the treatment. The changes before minus after in their levels of LDL cholesterol have a mean of 0 0.4 and a standard deviation of 21.0. based on data from, and then it tells you where it's from, use the 0 0.5 significance level to test the claim that with garlic treatment, the mean change in LDL cholesterol is greater than zero. What, uh, what do the results suggest about the effectiveness of the garlic treatment? Okay, so step one is um, the original claim that we're that we're considering is that the mean change is greater than zero and so the mean change in co less cholesterol levels is greater than zero. Okay, so in symbolic notation, this is going to be, what is it? Is it going to be P? Is P appropriate? No, it's not because P is a proportion, and we're not talking about proportions here. We're talking about the mean change. So we're going to do mu. Mu is greater than zero that's our that's our uh, original claim in symbolic notation 
the negation of that for step two is going to be mu is less than or equal to zero. The null hypothesis is going to be, see, H not is going to be mu equals zero. And the alternative hypothesis is going to be uh, mu mu is greater than zero. All right, see, so the equality one, the equality one right there had to go into my null hypothesis, and I took away the, the equal sign one, the one that had the equal sign in it. I had to go into my null hypothesis one, and I, uh, I threw away the, uh, the less than, because the null hypothesis always has to be equal. The, uh, the other one went into my alternative hypothesis. Okay, so there's my hypotheses. Step four is going to be significance level. This time it is given to be 0 0.05. Step five is the test statistic to identify and, and um, compute the test statistic. Okay, so, again, no standard, no sample, standard deviation is, uh, is, uh, is present. Let's see. Okay, so um, no, let's see. So this is test statistic. Now, um, no population is given. So we're going to use the um, the one from the second uh, row of that table. This one right here. It's about the mean, and uh, there's no standard devi deviation given. And also, m is greater than uh, 30. And in this case is uh, 61 or something. And in this case is 49. All right. So the test statistic we are going to use is Z equals, uh, no, T equals, T equals X bar minus mu over S over square root N. All right, so we need X bar. equals, you see now they give us x bar, don't they? The mean is 0 0.4, 0 0.4, enter. Now we need mu, mu according to the null hypothesis is zero. We assume the null hypothesis, so mu is zero. Then we need s equals, equals, standard deviation of a sample. Oh, what am I doing? I don't need that because it gives me the standard deviation. Um, equals two equals 21.0, all right? Um, N equals 49. 
Okay. And so, what now we can compute our t statistic. So, t equals um, equals x bar minus mu divided by twenty one divided by square root that one there all right so take a look at that right. equals uh, 0 0.3133 okay so that's step five now step six we need to find the p-value P val equals equals okay. Um, is this a right tail test, left tail test, or a two tail test? Well, because the alternative hypothesis is greater than this is going to be um, a right tailed test. Uh, if it were less than, it'd be left, less than left. But it's uh, it's a right tail test, so I'm going to do t dot dist and now notice that there's this command here uh, t dot dist dot rt which stands for right tail I'm going to go ahead and select that put in my t statistic and my uh, degrees of freedom which is going to be n minus 1 enter 0.447 all right which is bigger than alpha so step seven, I'm going to make my determination. And my determination is going to be to fail to reject null. It's because the uh, p-value is much bigger than alpha. Step eight, the conclusion. I failed to reject the null. So that's a not sufficient evidence one. So my conclusion is... There is not sufficient evidence to suggest that the mean difference um, is negative. All right. Okay, so there's that. There's that uh, hypothesis test. Let's go ahead and go on to the next one. This is example three. This is about tennis. Instant replay. Okay, the Hawkeye election, electron system is used in tennis for displaying an instant replay. That electronic system, sorry, the Hawkeye electronic system is used in tennis for displaying an instant replay that shows whether a ball is in bound, uh, is in bounds or out of bounds. So players can challenge calls made by referees. In a recent US Open, uh, singles players made 897 challenges and 231 of them were successfully were successful with the call overturned. Use a 0 0.01 significance level to test the claim that fewer than um, one-third of the challenges are successful. What do the results suggest about the ability of players to see calls better than the referees? All right. 
Let's let's do this. So step one, the original claim. The original claim is fewer than one third of challenges are successful. Okay, what is that in symbolic notation? One third, a percentage. Some calls are successful, some are not. So I think the thing is going to be P. Okay, so let's see. So uh, let P be the um, proportion of success calls. So step two is going to be, oh, wait, I didn't finish. Okay, and so the claim is going to be that P, that the number of challenges is less than 1 over 3. Step 2. You know what would be a good idea? is if you pause this video and did as much as you can, um, and then you could check and see if it's right. Um, okay, so step two now is uh, the alternative, or the, the negation. And the negation here is going to be P is greater than or equal to one and a third. Okay, step three is the hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is going to be the one that has equality, which is which happens to be the negation of the original claim. And so that's going to be P equals P equals one third. The alternative hypothesis is that p is less than one-third, which in this case is the original claim. Step four now is the level of significance. This one is actually... This one's actually going to be 0 0.01. That's what they give us, 0 0.01. All right, now it's time for the test statistic. Uh, this is a proportion, so it's going to be the uh, Z1. Z equals P. It's going to be P hat my over P over square root P Q over N. All right, so what do I need? I need P hat. Okay, P hat is given to me. It's 270. 1 over, oh, I need my equal sign, equals 271 divided by 879. And then, uh, what do I need? I need, oh, P bar. Um, let me get rid of that. Okay. Then I need P, and P is going to be equal equal to one third then I need Q Q is going to be one minus P uh, what else do I need now I need n and n is going to be 879 okay let me just check P hat yeah 879 all right great that's all there so now I'm going to do Z equals equals and I just plug everything into that formula p hat minus p close minus p close parentheses divided by square root of p times q divided by n 
Okay, there it is, it's negative. All right, now step six. I need to find the p-value. So p-val is gonna equal, all right, now I need to think, what kind of a test is this? This is going to be a, it's less than, so it's gonna be a left tail test. Less, left than, less than, left tailed. So that's gonna equal, so I want the area to the left of my Z, of my uh, test statistic. Well, that's what Excel gives me anyway. So I'm gonna do norm.dis, whoops, norm.dis, press tab so that it fills in everything for me. Z, this is a, um, a Z score so that it's normally distributed. That's one, one, uh, so it's standard normal distribution and one. So look at that, enter. You need to see the z-score again. There's the z-score. There's the p. Now step seven. Make our determination here. Step seven, what do we do here? Would we fail to reject or do we, or do we reject the null? In this case, we're gonna to fail to reject. And that's because P is bigger than alpha. And so step eight is that um, there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that less than one third of claims are successful. Indeed, it seems like this would suggest that more than one third of the claims are successful. All right. Okay, so one in every three claims, at least one in every three claims is successful. All right, let's go ahead and do the, net, the last example. Example four, and this is um, diet. All right, step one. Original claim. Okay, now now would be a good time for you just to go ahead and do do this all, and then we'll see what you get. Okay, when forty people use the weight the Weight Watchers diet for one year, their mean weight loss was three pounds, and the standard deviation was four point nine pounds. Um, use a zero point zero one significance level to test the claim that the mean weight that the mean weight loss is greater than zero based on these results does the diet appear to have statistical significance does the desire does the weight loss appear to have practical significance okay so the claim here which they pretty much gave us the claim test the claim that the mean weight loss is greater than zero so mean weight loss is greater than zero. All right, so this is again something about a mean. So I'm gonna do mu, and the claim is that it's greater than zero. The negation of that is going to be mu is less than or equal to zero. That is the one that has the equality in it. You know what? Why, why don't we mix things up just a little bit and change this? Let's say that the original claim 
let me modify this. Let's say that the original... Well, no, this is not good for people who've already started. Let's go ahead and um, carry this on. But I'll modify it uh, when I'm finished, and we'll see how that modification chain worked. Okay, so um, the original claim is that... Uh, all right, so there's my um, alternative. Okay, now I need to come up with my hypotheses. Okay, so H0 is that uh, mu is equal to 0. H1 is that mu is greater than zero greater than that's going to be a right tailed test when we, when we come to it for okay the significance level is again 0 0.001 no 0 0.01 um okay and now do step five and that is um, test statistic. This is a mean. We're doing a mean where we don't have a population standard deviation, so it's going to be a, so it's going to be t distributed. And uh, the test statistic is going to be. T equals x bar minus mu over s over square root n. That's going to be the test statistic in this case. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Equals. Okay, so what do I need? Well, I need x bar. And that's going to be, they give that to me, don't they? Their mean weight loss was three pounds. Uh, now, let's see, do I need to make that negative? Or we're just talking about the original claim is all about loss. Okay, so that's gonna be three. Then there's gonna be, um, so I've got that, now I need mu. mu equals zero and then after that we have s equals um, the standard deviation here is 4.9 pounds and n equals see how many people were in the study 40 whoops 40 Now we've got, so T, so we've got X, C equals, so X mu, there's that, or X bar minus mu, which is zero, divided by S, divided by square root n okay close that i think that's good 3.8 all right so step six now is to compute the p value that is going to equal this could do my t this is a t distribution whoops equals t dot dist uh, right tailed because it's greater than in my alternative hypothesis uh, there's my t statistic and degrees of freedom is going to be n minus one and i there it is that is certainly less than alpha which is uh, 0 0.01 
And so, step seven is I'm going to reject the null. Oop, come on. Step eight. Now my, uh, my conclusion here is going to be there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the mean weight loss was greater than zero. All right, there it is. And uh, that's my last example, so that's it.